Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope you guys had a wonderful Cisco life so far. All learning experiences. Okay. So, uh, welcome to this Devnet Lightning Talks uh, for on CI/CD. That's Jenkins X CI/CD for Cloud Native. So, we'll start off with this short agenda for this. And essentially, we're going to start with what CI/CD is all about, what Jenkins X is, what are the features it offers, how it helps with the whole of automated deployment CI/CD process, and how you can do CI/CD for a sample application. So that's going to be a demo at the end, right? So before that, about me, I am Rishikesh Radhakrishnan. I am a software architect with Cisco Custom Experience. And I have about 15 plus years in software development, design, architecture, and I'm currently focused with IoT, infra automation, and cloud management and orchestration. Right. So let's start. An introduction to CI/CD. Right. So what CI/CD is all about. So if you look at all these illustrations, they're essentially talking about a process where you're building your code, testing it, and deploying it. Right. So the whole thought around is to get your features that your business needs as soon as possible to the market. You don't want to wait for three months or four months to ha actually fulfill your business requirements. You want to get it out as soon as possible. If there's a problem, you want to roll it back to the last table version. So it's a repeated process. So you can think of it as a repeated process of build, test, and deploy, where your consumers are consuming the end product. Right? So you can think about this as a way of releasing your software faster to the market, an increase in the frequency of release, increase in the predictability and quality of your software, and reducing the mean time to recovery for your software. So you don't have to wait like a couple of days to decide whether you want to roll back or not. This gives you a method to roll it back immediately. Right? So what is Jenkins X then? Right. So Jenkins X provides you an automated CI CD environment for your Kubernetes environments, Kubernetes applications. And this, with the help of GitOps, it allows you environment promotion using GitOps. And one of the best features that I like is a preview environment. So a lot of the times, before you roll it out into stage or production, it's good to see what it looks like. So this is a feature that's built into it. And in terms of components, it's got these uh, components that I'm going to walk through. You have Nexus Sonotype repository, which is your artifact repository. So your uh, jar files, your NPMs, all of that are stored here. Then you have the Docker registry, which shows, which stores your containerized images or your Docker images. Then you have Jenkins, and then you have Chart Museum. So since this is a Kubernetes application that we're talking about, this Jenkins X helps you build a Kubernetes based applications. So essentially, the templates that you need it, it publishes Helm charts for you. So any specific Helm charts that you have for your application, those are pushed into Chart Museum. And how all this is done is with the help of Draft. So Draft looks at your source code and determines the Helm chart templates and the Docker file that you need to generate based on best practices. So it helps you build the entire infra as such. It gives you all the hooks in place for you to start doing CI CD. Right. Now let's look at a high level architecture. So you have the JX API, which interfaces with the Kubernetes API server. So this allows you to look at the log files of your application, log into the container itself. And another interesting aspect is it extends the namespace concept for your Kubernetes and provides you development staging for different teams. So you don't need necessarily need multiple clusters. A single cluster should suffice. But if you do have it, Jenkins X also allows you to switch between these clusters. So it's a single way to manage your entire application ecosystem. And it provides you webhooks into your Git provider. So any change that you do, it triggers a CI pipeline. That's with the help of webhooks there. So if you look at the webhooks that I mentioned here, these are provided for you. And of course, it allows you to switch between multiple clusters, Kubernetes contexts. It's all through a single CLI command. Yeah. Now, how this helps? These are the capabilities of Jenkins X. Now, some of these are what it promotes, actively advocates. And some of this, it provides out of the box. To begin with, the first one, use version control for all your artifacts. So that's the essence of GitOps. Any, anything and everything you do in your environment, any change, right? There's an application configuration change, maybe a source code change, some change in your environment. Everything goes through Git. So Git becomes the single source of truth for your application. So if you want to promote your application, the environment, the details are available in Git. So Git becomes a single source of truth. You can audit it later. It becomes beneficial for you. Next one is automate your deployment process, right? 
So Jenkins 6 gives you out of the box the entire CI CD pipeline and the webhooks required for you to do this. So you are free to focus on your actual business problem, not sit and tie up the infrastructure for you. Next one is use trunk based development. So those of you who do active development, do you recollect the number of branches you have in your environment? You make a change and you create a new branch. And every time that keeps spawning up. That becomes a problem because you need to spend a lot of overhead in maintaining those branches. What is advocated is having short-lived branches. You could have a hotfix, you could have a release, but ultimately merge to master. So you have one single master branch that's available for you. Of course, you can run your development parallelly, different tags, but what you release is through the master branch. So it reduces the number of branches you have, and short-lived branches would be easier for you to maintain going forward. Next one is implementing continuous integration. So any change that happens, any pull request triggers in a CI pipeline that runs your CI tests, and all those, and all those are available to you out of the box. In terms of continuous in delivery, uh, G uh, Jenkins X provides you semantic versioning. So those of you who are not familiar with semantic versioning, if you see something like version 1.2.3, 1 stands for your major version, 2 stands for your minor version, and 3 stands for your patch. So Jenkins X takes care of maintaining that. And every time you promote an environment, your pull request gets merged into master, Jenkins X publishes that as a Git tagged release. So it's, it has all the information that you need for your release. So semantic versioning and Git tag release. It comes out of the box for you guys. The next one is using loosely coupled architectures. So when you start doing CI CD, you want to deploy your application as soon as it's promoted. So Jenkins 6 uses the underlying Kubernetes features like rolling upgrades, uh, you know, uh, health checks, and service discovery to help you do that. So if you start using your applications in a loosely coupled architecture, it's beneficial for you if you design them in that manner. And finally, architecting for empowered teams. It's no longer a part where everybody needs to follow the same stack. So you could have a team working on an architecture which is microservices based, and maybe somebody needs a Java based stack, somebody needs a Python based stack. Using JX, it gives you something called quick starts, so you can start using the best practices for a particular language. You don't have to enforce language requirements across the entire team. Teams can choose what is good for them, what they are comfortable with, and also that's relevant to their business problems. Right? Now, how do you deploy Jenkins 6? Uh, in terms of deployment, it's pretty simple. It's a simple CLI. It's a binary that's available. Uh, you can install it on your existing Kubernetes cluster, or you can use JX binary to install a cluster for you and bootstrap Jenkins on top of it. It's pretty simple. And when you do that, it creates the pipelines for you. It creates the necessary Git hooks, the web hooks, and also gives the preview feature. So these all come out of the box. You don't have to think about how you're going to tie up the whole thing. It just works out of the box. How do you deploy it? You essentially use the JX binary relevant for your platform, whether it's a Mac, Windows, or Linux, and run the command JX create cluster with the provider name and the cluster name optional, or it generates an own cluster name and it sets it up for you. If you don't want Jenkins X to be bootstrapped onto your cluster, you can also skip it. If you have an existing cluster, just run the JX boot command. Make sure you set up the right context for your Kubernetes. If there's a multiple clusters available for you, set the right context, and it'll install Gen Jenkins X into your, the cluster of your choice. Now we spoke about the infrastructure as such, right? But how do you take care of the application? How that is done with the help of quick starts. So Jenkins X provides templates for you to begin with. At the moment, it's uh, in an evolving list. You have Node.js, you have Go, you have Python, PHP. And this keeps evolving, but you can pick up any one of them. And once you put the quick start, it sets up the CI CD pipeline, the GitHub repo, the webhooks, everything for you, just to start focusing on the code. So when we go through the demo, I'll show you how it kind of sets it up. Just give me a second. Give me a second. So this is a, a demo that's been recorded, and it typically takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes to do this. Uh, this is recorded in a fast forward mode, so you will see this running too fast, but uh, the underlying essence is pretty much the same. 
So this is a command that we run to create a quick start. So if you look at it, these are the list of quick starts that are available for you. And this is starting from a point where Jenkins X has already been installed. So this is running on an existing Kubernetes cluster. Right? So when you run this command, it's connecting to your GitHub repo, setting up the repository for you, creating the first commit, and thereby triggering an entire CI CD pipeline for you to publish your first version. So if you look at this, this is the, uh, this is the interface that you have. This is the, the last, the lit node app is the one that I'm kind of publishing now. So it provides you the entire setup there. This is the way to look at the logs, what's, active, what's the activity being run through in Gen Jenkins X. And in the bottom tab, I'm uh, showing you the pods that are being spun up in Kubernetes as part of the whole setup. So these are all the Kubernetes uh, pods that are being spun up. So this is the lit node app that was created. It's a Git repo on your desktop as well. So this gives you the entire details. You can navigate to the source code from here, which takes you directly to the Git repo. And this is the build that's going on now. So if you look at this, this is the entire CI pipeline that's being spun up. Your builds are going through. It's triggering the builds here. And this is the Git repo that's been created for you. And this is the one that I mentioned about Git backed environment. So anything that you're doing, it's being committed. It's a pull request that's created in Git. And that's how you may keep track of every change that's happening in your environment. So eventually, you'll see this being merged. And this gets published into your uh, stage environment. So this is the part where it's kind of updating the pods. So once this goes ahead, you'll, you'll see the Kubernetes pods being spun up for that specific application. So this is the application. It's waiting for the pods to be upgraded. And this is the merge that's been completed. And I spoke about semantic versioning. So Jenkins X has created this version for you. You don't have to worry about what's the version number. As we go ahead, you'll see that when I make a change and commit into my Git repo, Jenkins X takes care of bumping up this version as well. And this is the Git tagged release that I spoke about. Right. So here, now that, so this is the, these are the pods for my application that are being spun up. Now, if you look at the extreme left, that's the staging environment. This is the Kubernetes namespace that is being extended for use as an environment for you. So these are the pods being spun up, and the application is ready. Open it, and that's your application. Now, once you're done in stage, you want to promote it to production. So it's pretty simple. It's just, you just run this command with the right version number, give the environment as production, and it takes care of pushing it to production. So this will prompt you for certain inputs. Once you go through those inputs and uh, commit it, it'll create a pull request in the production environment, which will go through with releasing it for production. Right. So these are all the pods that are being spun up. It'll ask for a final approval in terms of your input. So this is the approval that it's requ requesting for. Once this is done, it's creating a new pull request, and that goes through here. And this is the production, uh, the pull request that's been merged. And you'll slowly see the pods being spun up for your production environment. Th this command, jxget applications, gives you the details of the applications being managed by Jenkins X. So if you see, this is the part where it's kind of rolling out into production. This is the version number. And it's the Kubernetes pods that is waiting for it to be spun up. So the same thing, I spoke about the namespace. This is the production namespace that's being used for your particular environment. And once the deployment is completed, you should see the URLs being listed here. So just click on that, and it takes you to the production application. Now let's look at a scenario where you're updating something. I'm going to change the welcome image, which is now just node, to something relevant to our current, uh, current event. So I'm going to create an issue. This will create an issue in, in GitHub as well. Thereafter, I just create a new branch, check it out. and do the necessary changes for me to uh, put up a new image there, a welcome message there. Again, go through the process, reference the particular issue in my git commit message, and push it back to the GitHub repo. 
This will force you to create a pull request in GitHub, as we'll see now. So I go to GitHub, and you'll see there's a pull request that's being prompted here. This is, a, this is due to the push that we did from our client now. And this, these all are done by using webhooks. These webhooks are provided to you when you install Jenkins X on your cluster. So these are all out of the box. Otherwise, you would sit and configure this manually. This is provided to you out of the box when you install Jenkins X. So now that we go here, this is the pull request. We uh, look at the issue that was created. We're going to merge the pull request now. Sorry, create the pull request, which will eventually be merged into your master branch. And this now spins up the th runs the same process of creating pods for you. The change here is provides you a preview environment. So it doesn't go directly to your stage or your production. It provides you a preview environment. And that is also recorded in your GitHub repo. Right. So if you go to the builds, you'll see this is the preview that's being built up. This is the CI pipeline. This is the CI pipeline being spun up. And these are the pods for my preview environment. Right. And that was the preview environment here. So this is exactly what I was looking for, the changes that I made for my code. So it's now been published in the preview environment. And this is good for me. So I'm going to now uh, click on Merge, which will now push this to my stage environment. And this was the part where it makes an entry in your GitHub. So you have an audit or a trail for everything that's done. So even the environment that was generated, it's available for you as a record. So now we go ahead and merge it. You merge this pull request. This creates a new version in GitHub and also publishes it to stage. So if you look at this environment, this is the build pipeline again. And if I look at this part here, it's creating a pull request for my stage merge. The version still shows the old one, but eventually you'll see the same uh, URL kind of referencing the new updates. So this is the part where the pods are being spun up for my CI pipeline. And once this gets merged, you'll see the changes being done here. And this was the semantic versioning part that I spoke about, where the, the version number has been bumped up and managed by Kubernetes or for, by Jenkins X itself. So this was the part where I, it was version 0.0.1 .0 before, but after I did the, the change and committed it back, Jenkins X took, took care of kind of bumping up the version. It's not, you don't need to take care of that. If you want to explicitly change the version, you can do that as well. It doesn't enforce you that, but provides you most of the things that you can do by default. And if you look at the issues, it's also referencing the issue for which we committed this change into our GitHub. And this is the pod upgrade feature. This is the underlying Kubernetes rolling upgrades that it's using to give you that CI/CD feature. So this is still referencing the old one because the pods are being replaced. The rolling upgrade is going on in the background. So this is my stage environment. The rolling upgrade is now in process. Once this completes, you should see the stage environment available for consumption. So this is, these are the pods that are being spun up. And there you go, the release is done. So it's a new version. And you refresh the page, and you see the new version of the code available for you. Now, once we have it in stage, we take care of putting it into production. So I'm going to now promote the environment. So you can see the version numbers being different here. So this, through the same process, I'm going to now push this to production. So this starts with a pull request in your production uh, environment repo. And it'll prompt you for an input. Once you're done with that, it'll take care of publishing it into production. The same process, though. It'll create a pull request. It'll look at uh, emerging the branches. And once it's done, it's available for you after it completes the whole rolling upgrade. Okay. So this is the URL that gets published for your production URL. And these are the pods that are being spun up as part of your CI CD. This is the continuous delivery part of it. And once this is complete, you will see that the application is now rolled out and you have parity in terms of your stage and your production. So this is a production, this is stage, this is production. And you can see that the change has now been rolled out. Right. Look at the way you are able to sim of course there's a simple example, but when you start doing it in production with your respective use cases, it provides you a seamless interface to actually work on your business problems rather than focus on setting up the infrastructure for you. Right? 
uh, once you refresh this, you should see that the version numbers are updated. And this is all from Git. So if you have an audit, you want to go back, or your Git contains all the details for your environment. Right. So that's, uh, and of course, the Git tag release. So that was pretty much it for my end. Uh, I hope you guys were able to learn something new from this. And uh, please do complete the session survey after this. We really like to understand what, the, what you liked, what you didn't. So please do give us your feedback. Right. Thank you so much.